What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Brujo 101. That means basic witchcraft. <laughs> and actually, male Brujo. It's not Brujo X. It's not Bruja. It's, not bruja. it's goddamn brujo, brujo here at Brujo 101. Uh, Tanya, how are you? Martin, I'm good. Ashe. I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. You just got good news from, uh, you know, all those chickens you killed finally paid off for that dude. They do. <laughs> 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 Michelle killed his own chickens. I know, yes, I know, yes. but no, but it's awesome when yes. it's like it's like prayers were answered, right? Yeah, one of our Cuban compadres was given his Spanish visa, so in eight months he'll be out of that piece of shit country. Oh wow! And like, off, why are you shitting on? And off such, to Spain. They got such good beer. And then we could go see him in Spain. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down to go do some wiki wiki in Spain. <laughs> right, he's gonna go convert all the people of that little ass town he's moving to. Oh, that's awesome! Good and news. we are joined by. Gabriela Cervantes. Hi, everyone. Speak a little louder, Gabriela. Dile, salúdalos. Aquí estamos. <laughs> thank you for having me on. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here today. Oh, uh, dude, it's uh, it's our pleasure to have you. Tanya uh, speaks very highly about your place. She she's been there, and she I like uh, it. I like it. She she's telling me how 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 have you not tried it? She said. Uh, oh yeah i'm definitely <laughs> dude i have such a huge sweet tooth like looking at those i'm like oh my god this oh is, you would love it the coffee yeah. is like ridiculous well sweet, that's yeah. the only thing i don't like sweet is the coffee get out of here i don't know no, i don't do sweet coffee unless i'm doing cuban coffee and then fuck it throw that sugar in there which is the hardest working part of that coffee by the way <laughs> everybody gives the coffee way too much credit mm-hmm. um and you saw how they make it in cuba oh, by hand with yeah. The oh yeah, yeah. and uh but usually i just drink black coffee but i always like some kind of cake or pastry or to go with it, with it. Yes. yeah oh that's very like my mom my mom and cute well even when like we're not here wherever we travel she's like i don't care as long as i have a bun and cafe at night mm-hmm. i don't care what happens oh, during at the night day. she goes coffee she goes she goes coffee all day all long time. she goes coffee in the morning coffee in the afternoon coffee at night yeah, uh, yeah. See, i don't know why maybe it's in my head but if i because i do it like on on nights that i'm gonna be up Mm-hmm. I'll fuck up a cup of coffee or two. Mm-hmm. But in the morning, I'm more of a morning get up and the first thing I reach for is coffee. Mm-hmm. And I usually do two and a half, two big cups. I mean, wow. decent sized cups. And then I'll add another. I mean, I'm just like, it's going, it's, going it's for go, it. go juice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But uh, you're a big coffee drinker? Yeah. I mean, I didn't drink coffee till I was in college. And I didn't understand why people liked it because it tasted so nasty to me. But then once I didn't have a choice but to be up because of finals, I was like, all right, I'm going to start drinking this stuff. That They didn't have just... Adderall at your college? They, they didn't. did. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have <laughs> Let them have miedo What's going Adderall. On? Oh, yeah, your parents said, no vayas a hacer drogas porque te violan. I know. <laughs> I'm like, no ocupaban drogas para violarme. Oh, <laughs> hey now. <laughs> Este, yeah. um, well, that, was a, that was a huge curveball. No, you know what? You discovered it way before I discovered it, though, because I didn't start drinking coffee until my early to mid thirties. Really? Never drank coffee How before. How did you that. get through your twenties without you drugs? Know, well, I, with a lot of drugs. alcohol and weed and sleeping <laughs> in late, I didn't have a whole lot. Of- <laughs> Your mom didn't yeah. drink coffee? My mom was a ginormous coffee drinker. Um, yeah. My mom drank a lot. Every time anybody would show up to the house, it's like they would always have coffee. Mm-hmm. They, she would always offer people coffee. There was always coffee brewing. There was always coffee at the house. Um, we came from a very coffee culture. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I just never, you know, um, and my mom put a lot of sugar. She put cream and sugar in her coffee. Loved it sweet. I remember uh, before she passed, she used to, we used to, I used to give her coffee. And dude, it was, and you know, she was diabetic and shit. So we'd put like the the Splendas the in Splenda. there, which is sweet, which makes it sweet as fuck. Yeah. And I, thank amargo. She'd be like, oh, this oh, is so, dang. and she, she just liked it, loved it, sweet, sweet, sweet. I don't know what people like. I think if you're a Splenda person, you're on another level because I've had a customer, I <laughs> <laughs> posters come and ask for their one cup of coffee and ten Splendas. Yes. And I just looked at them and I was like, okay. No customer um, wants their order like that. So yes, yes, I know people that do ten splendors in their in their uh, Dang, iced coffee. That's crazy. No, but but you know what though? It's it's uh, if you have a very big sweet tooth, mm. it it's um, I mean it makes sense. Yeah. I I I like my coffee though. Do you do do you do uh, cold coffee, Tanya? I only do cold coffee because when I did Saint, they took away uh, hot coffee. Well, they took oh. away coffee from me, and then in my attempt to curb that i'm like oh I'll just drink it cold 
Yeah. So it's not hot. You're just not supposed to drink hot. Well, I'm then? not supposed to eat anything hot. Like I have a sign that says I can't eat things that are hot or ingest things that are hot. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I was going to say something really filthy right now. You better right stop now, right and I'm just not going to. <laughs> We're done. We're not. <laughs> Next time I'm drinking with you and your husband, We're I'm going to say it. <laughs> it's like I'm saving it. <laughs> Jerry, help. Remind me about Jerry, the hot stuff me. that you don't swallow. No. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Just, temperature. just remind me of that temperature <laughs> and remind I mean, me of that conversation and i'll remember gonna, right I, away i, 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 will re- I love this pre-valentine's day we're very romantic yes. um yeah we're talking about food coffee and coffee yes Thanks. but i love yes. i love you cold lo- coffee you love i love cold, cold coffee i love sugar i'm a sugar i won't add anything to it it has to be sweet already i'm not the kind of person like i've seen people who go and they'll do like iced coffee and they're like oh could you add this could you yeah i don't want to do all that shit no. just give it to me the way you made it we're yeah. good let's go yeah that's, that's why i suffer in cuba and i'm like so tired sometimes because yeah. it's all coffee and i don't want to drink th- well i can't drink that coffee and i'm like that's why i drink like a coke in the morning because sometimes i'm exhausted i'm like let's go love yeah. the cold brews they love the cold coffees and i you know, I've had them, but I don't care if the temperature is hot as hell. I don't care if it's cold. I want hot coffee. I like hot coffee. I don't it like it. It has a different cold. vibe. It has a way different yeah, vibe. Yeah, hot coffee is like self-soothing almost. Mm-hmm. And then cold mm-hmm. coffee is like you're out here wild in trying to get through the day. <laughs> yeah, you're out here wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great that, name that for is our, coffee. That, that's our partition. I'm out here wilding. <laughs> Martina is soothing his yeah. soul. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, listen. I'm like, where the fuck are the chickens? Words have never been spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's go. Yeah, this exactly. is true though. Yeah. Now, I, what about you, true. Gabby? Are you, Gab, do you prefer Gabby or Gabriela? Gabby's fine. All right. Do you prefer cold coffee or hot coffee? I, or you go both ways? You know what? I do both. So I do Ooh, hot in the morning, time. and then the ice is like to pick me up in the afternoon and the evening. Yeah. And the, and that ice, the ice, those nitro coffees, they're like they're next level now, yeah. dude. And then they have those slow drip ones. There's a place, dude. If you like cold coffee that wants to wire you, mm-hmm. on Wilshire and Third, there is a before not in the promenade, more mm-hmm. on the other side of the promenade. Um, there's a place called Demitas, and they have this this cold this slow drip cold brew that it they they have the freaking the the glass apparatus right there uh at the on the window and they they this thing drips for and like 24 it. 48 hours mm-hmm. and it is it's like crack yes it is like i'm there tomorrow it <laughs> is an incredible as a matter of fact when chicky's sister came to visit and she drinks strong coffee and she's a coffee like she's a, she's a coffee addict right mm-hmm. as as a lot of us are uh and she had it and she called it crack coffee wow she was like oh shit. Go, we have to go try it now. right i was like oh yeah i like things that are like i like uh i like i like their coffee and i also like vietnamese iced coffee oh yeah that, that's sweet too yeah sweet too why what happened chicky it does I, though. It I makes do, you want to fight people. I do nice. like it though. Sometimes I need that extra push, Jiggies. I'm like, let's do it. Let's and what go. kind of cup? Co- now, uh, postres y café? Yes, postres café is. Postres the café. So, tenemos de todo: ensaladas, paninis, wraps. Also, oh, it's everything, not just not just cafe, desserts. Yeah. It's yeah. a full café. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like desserts and coffee, like café, like coffee. But yeah, it's well, a cafe. that's what I named it because, well, yeah, it's a cafe. Yeah. Um, pero I knew I had to have desserts and coffee wherever I was supposed to be for 24 hours at any given time. <laughs> so I'm like, awesome. might as well have access to it and sell Very it to good. other people. <laughs> and do are, now, are you, do you consider, are you a big coffee aficionado? Like, do you, like, do you have like um, awesome coffees in there and like all the, all the fancy, you know, like all the, uh, the flavors y toda la chingada. I have la like uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. I have like your um your typical selection for somebody that likes coffee but is not snobby about it. That's me. I, like you don't call it venti. N- no. Yeah, no. So I've had people that <laughs> I had this one woman come in and she asked for a dry latte and my staff didn't know what it was so they just made a latte how we usually make it you know with eight ounces of milk the two shots of espresso and the syrups she sends me a dm of a picture of the cup and she's like what is this this is all milk i'm like yeah that's how we make the latte like what are you talking about you know <sighs> and she's like i ordered a dry latte and i'm like pues que chingados es un dry latte and what is it i haven't heard that one you haven't heard it okay so then i'm not crazy i haven't heard that one either exactly so then i was like what the hell is that and it turns out that it just means less milk I'm like, oh my God. you just have said, like, can I get half the milk or something? But she no, no, had, no. Dry. No. 
por favor. Yeah, I'm gonna have tell you that my best friend slash comadre, sorry Vanessa, whenever we go, <laughs> whenever we go to Starbucks, her fucking order is so complicated. She's like three pumps of the. I, I don't even order it. I no. go, it's embarrassing. It is. I'm not going to do it. She's like, oh my God, that's how I like. I'm like, it's, I don't want to do it. It's so like too much. This woman like just kept going back and forth with me. And then she's like, this is a machine I have at home. This is how oh, I make it. And I'm okay. like, pues quédate en tu casa, estupida. Like, why are you coming You're like, are you trying to get a job? Or are you trying <laughs> to buy what coffee? No, so world. then. You want to be our barista? Okay. That's what I said. But so then, now, in her defense, if, if if I'm at a place that that does coffee and it's kind of like, you know, it's coffee. Like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect... They know the lingo. But that's what I asked. Like, I went on my TikTok and I asked my audience, like, hey, to my barista audience, but like, I think is this that a lingo thing? is probably specific to And something. they said I no. Love, like, I, love, that's... I love how the authority is TikTok. It is. <laughs> no, no, no. I asked TikTok and they said this does not exist. So there we go. Case <laughs> fucking closed. <laughs> this is some Judge Judy shit right exactly. here. <laughs> this is how we have so many witches now. Witch talk. I went on TikTok. No, no, no. I lit a candle. I got a Laurel. Hey, leaf. My did, life got better. I oh, did no, a limpia no. on my mom. Oh yeah, where'd you learn how to do the limpia? TikTok. I went on TikTok and said, I charged boom, my crystals. And it said there's no such thing as a dry latte. Exactly. I was like, I had I had somebody that she said TikTok. Uh-huh. I had somebody message me and they're like, I don't know what's wrong. I've been doing what they told me to do. What oh they told me God. to do with the cascaria, and I'm like, "Who are Who's you?" They? First oh, of all, who are you? Yeah. Like you're yeah. just messaging me, like wilding out. That's so... And she's like, "Oh no, I saw a TikTok," and I was oh, like, "Well, yeah. I go, well, first of all, TikTok's not a guru. Yeah. And yeah. second of all, uh, this obsession with cascaria is a little crazy, but okay. But yes. So, so, so yeah, you went no, on. I just went and surveyed the audience. Okay, That's we what surveyed. I did. Yeah, we surveyed. Yeah, yeah. And the survey said we don't know what the hell that is. All the baristas were like, she was tripping. Okay. Yeah, so then I go next I mean, door, right? Did to, you Google dry latte? After that, I did. Okay, and, so, what, and what did Google no, say? No, I, I, that's what they said, like less milk. Uh-huh, so when okay. I went I went next door to like vent to my neighbor who's a tax preparer and his uh, employee was sitting there and he's like, dude, that's my ex-wife. And I was like, what? No, literally? <laughs> no, like that, his ex-wife? Or was that yeah, how she no, acted? that was literally his ex-wife. Oh, wow. And he's like, I used to hate going to Starbucks for her orders because I would stress out so much. So I guess he knew oh, she went, no. and I was Dang, like, <gasps> her coffee sent them to la ruina. I would not. <laughs> That's I would why I was not. like, oh, I don't feel bad anymore. You know, I would not. Eat. Plus, I'd I also like, feel like, like fucking mind if you yeah, think I'm gonna you imagine? You like, I also feel like if you're out. there, she could have been like, "There's too much milk. Could you please redo it?" Yeah. And you would have redid it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, but you just want to uh, kind of go home and bitch about it. Like, yeah. Don't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, we're not about that life. It's crazy. We're not. I don't believe that the customer's always right. Now, what? Do you have a cafe de olla? I actually don't. Okay. I don't do it. Uh, well, but I, I hear you really speak good. some great Spanish, and I'm thinking, yes. oh, they probably have cafe de olla. No, we have horchata lattes. Horchata latte. I've horchata had that. Lattes. Delicious. Yeah. You know good. what? We went to a coffee shop in Mexico City, and their menu was probably out of all the coffee place. I mean, you know, you have strong. St- you have your Cuban coffee, you have your mm-hmm. Turkish coffee. You know yeah. that, which is like phenomenal. But as far as like like these these um craft coffees, let's call them, mm-hmm. this was probably the most elaborate, incredible menu I've ever seen. Wow. It was fat. They had a chiltepin. Oh, I've heard of coffee that coffee. With, from Guerrero? The, uh, this was in Mexico City. I don't know where the coffee it came from. from it probably, yeah, it probably comes from yeah. Guerrero. But the the just we went when we find when we found it, we're like, oh shit, let's go. We wake up extra early to go there to go get before it. we went exploring because mm. that's how freaking good, good it, was. it was. Yeah. I've yeah. Yeah. there's a really good and th- I mean that not just one of the ones that they had. They had other ones with like different like just different it seemed like herbs and flavors and mm. spices. I feel like Mexico's way ahead of the game sometimes on yeah. things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. there's so many different variations variations in the different towns Mm -hmm. because even in rosarito when i when i go to my sister's house in rosarito there's a coffee place that has like so much stuff i've never tried in my life and i'm like oh i'll try that oh i'll try this like it's so good i feel like coffee is really uh evolved yes it it really has evolved this isn't your mama senka it it (laughs) (laughs) not your mama specifically Sorry, mom. Not not your mom. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a lot of mamas out there that do sank. The grandmas now probably that do that did sanka and shit. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a thousand people who don't know what sanka is, who listen to this. Just, oh, no, uh, probably nobody knows. But like, well, I guess my mom, my mom towards the, the end did sanka. It's the folders of the 70s. It's uh yeah and 80s and uh, it was in, this instant coffee sanka sanka. 
Sanka. Oh, okay, Sanka. I'm like, Sanka. Oh, no. <laughs> She's like, what is that? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so you've heard of Sanka? I've heard of Sanka. Okay, yeah. Yes, Sanka. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, is it the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, so... I, uh, uh, so what is so you just have like your lattes and your uh, as far as coffee goes, yeah. Things? Because I I even tell them like there's another spot down the street that's more for that okay. demographic. Porque I'm not gonna try to be something I'm not. Okay. And that's something that I learned as a business owner. Because if you're trying to appease everyone that comes through your door, you're gonna burn out. Yes. Now, so what do you? What does your place? What would you say? This is what we. This is what we know. This is what we specialize in. You can't touch this shit. We don't have your chilta bean coffee, <laughs> yeah, no. but we got, and we don't got no goddamn cafe de olla. <laughs> Go to goddamn la monarca if you want cafe de olla. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, what, what? What? What do you say? This is what you want to come here for. Well, for the our signature coffee is called cinnamon crunch latte, and oh so my. we've made our own recipes. Okay. Um, we also have the butter beer latte, which butter beer is a Harry Potter drink. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Oh, we're familiar. Um, so I'm a big fan, and I always wanted to have. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Yes. Oh wow. So and like, <laughs> that seems all. Oh, wow. I feel like everybody yeah. that is read Harry Potter. Well, uh, your generation. Period. Yeah, we're big on Harry Potter, and I think that I, I'm still waiting for my Hogwarts letter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or if you watched Matilda growing up too, like you also Matilda the teenage witch. No, la niña. Oh. That was Sabrina. That was Sabrina. Oh, wow. Matilda, Get the little girl right. that like has tel- telepathic. Oh, was that the little French one? I think it's ba- based on a French story, uh-huh. but she has like parents that are really like obnoxious, and she's a very smart little girl, and she ends up like getting adopted by her school teacher. So this is yes, how the devil I brainwashed you to leave Catholicism? So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like anybody who watched Matilda and thought she was Matilda now uh, wears, you know, crystals mm. right. and, wears and, believes, yes. and watches A- witch talk. Puertas y se mete el diablo. Yeah. There you go. My mom didn't want me reading Harry Potter because oh. the church said not to read it. Oh, that's wow. awesome. cosas de brujas oh and all that. Oh, and I, oh, remind me to tell you where I ended up this weekend it's just fantastic but i let's keep going with this co- with the coffee and so you have all these flavored coffees which are fantastic yeah and now what about as far as your pastries um well we make our vegan donuts and delicious yes mm-hmm. and <laughs> are you vegan? i say no i'm not okay. i was for like four weeks because of beyonce <laughs> but <laughs> that's such an la thing huh did you see it on tiktok <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I, I saw Beyonce's TikTok. I think the vegan pastries really were like a hit. Like, I don't know where they came from. And before I'd be like, I don't want to eat vegan pastries. They're going to be dry and crappy. No. But legitimately, I just ordered vegan pastries like from a, a, like a local baker. You like know a what? Pop-up. Hooter got They're some, delicious. Hooter They're really Yours are really good, too. Yeah. Hooter got some vegan pan dulce for Felipe for, for one of his birthdays. Oh, and, yeah. And it was actually really, really good. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like it's more moist. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I feel like mm-hmm. vegan pastries are more moist than regular, like mm-hmm. dairy. Like, I don't know why. Oh, vegans are more moist. They... <laughs> the I don't want to know how no, you the know pastries. that. Yeah. The pastries are moist. I don't know. Yeah. That's what you said, and I'm just agreeing <laughs> and, with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just started making those at home because I saw um, Beyonce's documentary. Nice. The homecoming one. Where mm-hmm. she went raw vegan, and I was like, "Well, Beyonce is vegan. I'm vegan. No más dure cuatro semanas." That's but. hard, dude. It is. She's hard. like, and I'm also gonna have twins, and I'm also yeah, gonna no. have- <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, so, so you're now not all your pastries are vegan. No. Though. Okay. So what you what kind of pastry? Like just cakes and we we do donuts. cake jars. Mm-hmm. So when oh. yeah, we were gonna have like the big cakes and have them by the slice mm-hmm. at the cafe, but we ended up opening shop. June 12th of 2020 Mm -hmm. and now we had a pandemic in our hands so we got creative and put them inside a mason jar to just reduce like exposure and like contact and stuff like that very smart i like so, those mason jar uh cake, pies. the cake jars the pies yeah. And the cakes, yeah yeah so it, i mean and people love the jar and they keep it and it's, it's really like eco-friendly or whatever but yeah, yeah. or whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> or whatever <laughs> yeah um and then and then you also have food mm-hmm yeah, so we have we've now like expanded our menu to include chilaquiles, uh, oh. breakfast burritos, chilaquiles waffles, green red, green. Oh. 
And it's best. like estilo Zacatecas, so tienen oh, like elote, queso, queso fresco, crema. I've never oh, been to Zacatecas. No. Your, are, is your family from Zacatecas? My mom is from Zacatecas. My dad is from Jalisco. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah I've never had those kind of chilaquilas. I just love green chilaquilas. Yeah. I love green chilaquilas. Way more than red. I don't oh, like the dude, red. I, love, I, I love, love green. With, with, with two over easy eggs yes. on top. Oh, oh, the best. If you don't put the eggs on top, they're like, so I've ordered chilaquilas before and there's no huevo. What the hell do you mean there's no huevo? <laughs> What are you talking what about? Tortilla chips. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> With just salsa on what top. What is yeah. this shit? Yeah. 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 Um, That's how we make them. I, dude, I got to go check those out. I'm yeah. going to go just for the chilaquiles really and the coffee. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the cake in a jar. And the cake in a yeah. jar. <laughs> 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 por eso estamos como estamos. Right? Dude, I no. can't lose yeah. no way. Yeah. Um, dude, so Postres Cafe and you're in Bellflower. Yes. But, uh, we're out in Bellflower. And you, what, what's your what's your uh, Instagram again? It's Postres Cafe. Postres Cafe. Yeah, Postres, like P-O-S-T-R-E-S. That's, mm-hmm. Now, what did you do before you opened up Postres Cafe? So, I'm actually a social worker. Wow. Yeah, that's that's did what you, I well, went to th- school for. Uh, did you go to school in L.A.? I went to do my undergrad at UCLA. I got a sociology degree from there. And then I did my master's from USC. Mira. I know. Little name dropping. Yes. Like, so just those what? two very first of all, to get into school. Listen, first of all, <laughs> first of all, she's paid off the loan. I'm gonna respect exactly. the fact that you said like I'm not gonna be all like ah she thinks she's up. no fuck that <laughs> no. And way. I'll tell you Estoy what traumada. my 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 niece uh, is doing her first year at UCLA right now for her oh, undergrad. Congratulations. And I know how hard she worked to get into UCLA. Oh, yeah. You just can't, like, the mm-hmm. work, like, okay, once upon a time, I was trying to transfer from Santa Monica City College to UCLA. <laughs> uh-huh. I remember the shit that I was fucking proposing for them to accept me with, right? Mm-hmm. And then when I see what she has done um, in her, you know, uh, from 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 from, th- from elementary, literally, literally. To, to now, yeah. the amount of work that was put in, not just by her, but by her whole support system. You cannot, unless you are exceptionally gifted, if you don't have a support system, Absolutely. you will never get into a freaking uh, a UCLA. Exactly. Unless you're a, 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 a freak, a freak of nature, and you yeah. figure shit out. I mean, that's... So congratulations to you. Yeah, because, congratulations. Because, because I, do know, cause I do know how hard it is. And again, yeah. I have a different appreciation now that I see what it takes la chinga la chinga yeah. because it is a chinga plus, so, plus so. you're female plus you're hispanic my comadre went to ucla did and then usc same thing you did mm-hmm. and she's in she's also she runs a non-profit but it was una chinga right yeah, and, no, the no, amount no. and of, expensive and yeah. expensive and women yeah. of color are not um can i ask it's you represented uh, there this is a whole different animal but you grew up with a catholic mom Oh yes, hardcore Catholic. Hardcore. Now, uh, were you uh, in your family that was there? A lot, was there a history of? Uh, were, were your parents? Are you first generation, second generation? What's first gen. On? First gen. So your parents were born in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fascinating. And so their whole thing is: tienes que estudiar. You have to study. You have to go to school. Blah blah blah. Yada mm-hmm. yada. And any brothers and sisters? Yes, I'm the middle child. <laughs> I uh-huh. have an older so sister. And now did your older sister go to college? So, funny thing, uh, we ended up graduating high school together because I ended up skipping a couple grades. Because you were just, so you're like a gifted <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> just say it. I say, it. digo, traumada, pero yeah, graduada, no, 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 you know? No, 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 it's all good. Hey, man, props. Este, so, so, like, yeah. I'm so, yeah, okay. we ended up graduating high school together. She uh-huh. goes off to UC Riverside. I go to UCLA, but she was 18 and I was 16. Wow. Okay. And you let you and your parents one. are just ecstatic. You would think, right? They they would. I, they, I mean, I think not? they knew some. They just don't realize the impact. Th- yeah, of it. no. But I remember when my sister was going to Harbor College and then she transferred to Dominguez. Um, there was people that said, "Why are you going so far? The school's right here." Oh okay, my gosh! Yes, Tandekos. exactly. Like that, so you they. Don't really. They know. They tell you study, but they don't really have a roadmap. It's to like guide you here's it. why we came. Uh-huh. You have to go do that. You have yeah, to. So literally, you could, la bendición. Oh, and yeah, like, yeah, for sure. That's a, so. Now, yeah. When you went to school, did you did you live at the dorms or did you commute? I did because I couldn't drive. So, which oh, is fascinating. Yeah. So now you're 16, living in the fucking dorms. Your parents must be freaking the fuck out. They weren't because I, they didn't know what. 
I was in. I think that's the only thing well, that yeah, kept because they them had nothing to, to relate it. You know how right? I knew like... my mom was like, "Oh, have you seen so and so's kid? They also go to UCLA." And like, I'm thinking in her mind, she's thinking this is one classroom or like a couple classes oh where I could God. run into and someone. Wow. UCLA is huge. Yes. It's a whole city, yes, and that's yes, when yes, I understood yes. that like she couldn't grasp it. So I was like, "No, I haven't seen him." <laughs> Girl, maybe mañana, ma. Yeah, like, oh, I'm still hijo de Leti. She kept asking me, like, oh, el hijo de Leti que también va a UCLA. And I'm like, no, wow. ma. But, like, cada fin de semana, like, if I would run into them so easily. Now, you were know? you wilding out? I did my, like, second year. <laughs> Your second year. My first year, I was terrified of, like, failing a class. So it was okay. de la clase al dorm. And then, like, I would eat. And that was it. Okay. I was so scared. And then, like, once you got comfortable, you're like, Shit, Once I got this shit in the bag, let's yeah. roll. So then I started, uh, I used my older sister's ID because I still wasn't 18. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't what be could out you, there. You what know? could you even do at 18? Nada. That's what I'm just going to say. That's so crazy. I got a fake ID. Can yeah. you drink? No. Nope. No, I couldn't. So on, on my 18th birthday, I was trying to use my real ID and they ended up giving me like a wristband for like the 21 section. And I was like, bro, I was just trying to use my real ID for for once so yeah that's funny. <laughs> that's wow funny. pero pues todo eso son cosas que mis papás pues no they didn't know they didn't know and I'd rather not just to save them the panic now they do <laughs> thanks for tuning in um, <laughs> no well I wrote a book about it oh what so they know <laughs> You got uh, uh, all right. Yeah. This isn't that, even before okay, we get well, listen, the first of all, thing. yeah, I have my own business. I'm a social worker, <laughs> UCLA and USC. It. Oh yeah, and I'm a fucking author. By the way, uh, I made the best. I found list. her through something else completely. Like, cause I found you because I saw you. I think on TikTok. <laughs> talking about talking about um like uh you were like mentoring people to do mm -hmm. like vision boards and i was like oh that's so interesting right yeah and then i the ball then i found out that you had the posters place so then i went to the posters place but mm -hmm. before we get off this was it crazy to see the disparity in like social economic circles going oh, to ucla God. because i mean i went to cal state la right and mm -hmm. i had friends who went to ucla and literally there was kid there were kids right because i was 18 there was mm -hmm. kids in bmws with fucking credit cards like i, I mean, was splitting a hamburger special with my with my literally, friend literally you know i stayed I mean? at taco like, bell yeah, yeah like so was it crazy for you for me it was complete and utter culture shock i grew up in baldwin park and it's like bp bp big bowling you know like that's yeah. where i'm from and i never saw an i dated somebody from baldwin park you guys are gangster we are <laughs> <laughs> Yo no soy chola, nada más digo. No, no, I just, I'm not a chola, I just back them up. <laughs> yeah, that's why when you said foo, I was like, for real, foo. <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> but yeah, I mean, I saw, the first time I saw a Lambo in person, an Audi, I didn't even know what that was called, the little circulos, like, you know, like, <laughs> I didn't like know. Olympics. These... It's the Olympics. Yeah. Olympic no, then... no, 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 but that's like, when you do come that's from, some real from, shit. from the hood and you go into some, a, a where you're like, uh, listen, I've seen people that, that have never had, you know, they don't know, they still don't know how to use a fucking knife as adults, mm -hmm. you know, um, where people have grown up extremely sheltered, you and know, privileged. and privileged. Well, but there's, there's, but there's such a vast difference between the way some people, there's some kids that grow up in private chats. And yachts, and then there's kids that don't know how to swim, mm -hmm. and have never flown. Well, yeah, you like know? I mean, I didn't see snow till I was a fucking teenager. I have, I think I've seen it. I had a conversation with my husband because my my mother was born in Mexico City, but my dad it was second generation, right? He was born in Silver Lake, so then me, right? Okay, but my mother grew up in a very like. Uh, they were they always push the arts on her a lot. My mm -hmm. mother like draws, knit, she does all that. So she would take me to museums, right? And they were free. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a certain day they were free. And my dad living here knew all that, so they would take me to museums. Okay. So then when Jerry and I met my husband, I was like, Oh, let's go to this museum and we went and I was like, Yeah, isn't it crazy? Like it's changed on so what the fuck I've never been here. And I was like, Didn't your mom take you to museums when you were little? Mm. I never went to museums. He's like I've never been, and I had a I had museum memberships for my son, right? Yeah. yeah. Like from the get, like Natural History Museum, this museum, that museum, wow. like, and it was like when we got together, Nick was like eight or nine. He was like, I can't believe you do all this shit. And I was like, well, didn't you do it? He's no. like, no, my parents are immigrants. Like they were just trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. that's and, and Pero si no a misa. That yes. Misa. Oh, wake up on Sunday and he go to church. He tells me about fool. los tacos católicos. He only Let's likes to go to church because they had tacos. Grab like, the water and fucking do the sign. The nachos of the cross. after church. Yes, yeah. he was like, Where, I only went so, for the tacos católicos. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, 
first of all, let's just back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then you you uh, you do sociology, you said? Yes. Sociology, which is fascinating that you've majored in sociology at UCLA. What year was that? I graduated 2012, so started 2009, and I okay. finished 2012. I have a friend who now lives in Oregon who went through their sociology program back in the late 90s. Okay. Um, Niels Hansen, he's a professor at them mm -hmm. uh, But anyway, um, so, and then you decide you wanted to be a social worker. So I didn't decide that. When I when I graduated from UCLA, I quedé traumada, pero también quedé embarazada. What, what do you mean? When you say traumada, what were you traumatized traumada about? Traumada y embarazada. In what, that, what, in that what, fucking what, order. What were you traumatized about? What I was, well, the you? culture shock, uh -huh. um, getting my first F in my life. Cause I, and when, you graduated pretty young, I would imagine. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, yo iba con el ego acá. Your you ego know, was huge. I was 16 years old walking onto UCLA campus. The pride campus. of Baldwin Park over yeah. here. <laughs> Según yo, right? <laughs> Según yo. And then yeah, I hit the brick wall right away taking my first chemistry class. And I me llega la F plus And I'm like, I don't think this is mine. <laughs> oh, wow. You're a wow. wrong girl. So, that's when I realized, you know what? Um, I'm not going to be a doctor because I went in. Oh, you wanted to go to medical school. I went in thinking I was going to be a radiologist because because that was the highest paying job and that's all I knew okay. how to... You were just looking for dough. Well, because that's what my parents said I was going to do, right? Yeah. You're going to go to school to get a good job so you can be rich. Wow. Andale. As, o sea, and I was so naive, like innocent. Well, yeah, you're, you're 16. What, yeah, is, what do you know? Get, but who was going to tell me? And it's not know? like a good plan in the real world, right? Yeah. Like right. You're, you're seeing like the the situation and you're like, oh, I'm going to make money. So, radio, yeah. so, radio, so you're like, okay, this isn't going to happen. Let me switch gears. Yeah, at that point I was like, let me figure out what I actually like to do so I can graduate from here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's crazy? I took sociology while I was in high school. I took my first class during a summer that I was doing community college because I was that kid trying mm -hmm. to graduate early mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to increase my odds in getting into a good school. Jesus Christ. That's, that's the only way I knew I, I was going to... I went to high gonna... school for four years and still didn't graduate. Oh, <laughs> but you're here. I know. <laughs> she said you're here. <laughs> you're doing amazing things anyway is what yeah. i'm saying I, and you know for the longest <laughs> time i had shame for not having a degree really? i felt that's, shame that's i felt incomplete bad. and i but which is society. why i'm such a which is why i'm such a um advocate for just you know it's it's college is amazing you do learn a lot but you can learn a lot with without going to college exactly and and and, and i think that the value that immigrant parents place on it and and not to dismiss it because graduating from college is important and it does open up lots of doors for you and you make amazing relationships mm -hmm. but the reason why they push it is just because that's just all they know that's all they know that's all they know and yeah. they and, and and it's an interest it's a very and i'm and I, i've lived it which mm -hmm. is why I'm, I'm 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 talking about it like this but then so then you decide okay so this isn't gonna this isn't gonna pan out so at what point did you just decide i'm gonna go the sociology route My i'm sorry the 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 um, social work. Social work. So it was after I, I graduated, I got pregnant, so I had to stop. Because when you, I would have kept going if I mm -hmm. hadn't gotten pregnant. I would have mm -hmm. had my PhD by like 22 or some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. But oh, wow. I needed that. And you needed that reset. Yes. And I didn't know I was going to go and be a, a whole mom. <laughs> um, but I was like, you don't do, you don't graduate from UCLA at 19 and stop there. So it was very ego driven again. Um, but I talked to my mentor and I said, look, I want to get a master's degree, but I don't want to do it for anybody else. And I actually want to do something that I enjoy. And she's like, Mika, you'd be a great social worker. She's like, you're naturally always in, like helping people anyway. Might as well get paid for it. God, that's so draining, though. But she told me it's the licensed route, the licensed clinical social work route. Mm -hmm. And so por el trauma también viene that I like to help people and I'm a people pleaser and I'm a, I did all that for years because I went through dark stuff as a kid that put me in like this hyper vigilant mode of like I'm not safe like I need to keep and that's why I was always analyzing the environment which naturally inclined me into sociology and social work where I, I now look at society and I know exactly where the holes are at and how to fill them <coughs> and how to connect people and how to create businesses as a result. So everything that I've been through, it kind of like connected the dots for me. Now, let me ask you this. What did you uh, did you do um, social work? for a while or did you just not? you know what <laughs> last uh week on wednesday was my last day as a social worker well congratulations yeah so i did it for six years 
Wow. Yeah. And I just stopped because now I have all the other businesses I'm doing. But How I, many I left. do you have? I have Postres Cafe. I have uh, Empresaria Society, which is which is what the, I saw. What uh-huh. you saw. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have another uh, mobile espresso bar services called Cafecito by Gabriela. And I am, you go to like parties like that yeah, kind of mobile? private oh, events. Yeah, it's so really cool. cute. Um, so like a taco lady, but you're a coffee lady. Yes. Yeah. And then I do smart. consulting and business coaching. So it was time to leave the social work. Setting. She has a lot of free time. Sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you hands on at the cafe or not really? Now I'm starting to step away from it, but it's because I'm working on the marketing side. For the cafe itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm doing like the footwork of like establishing relationships with other business owners and collaborating and doing all that stuff. And so then I'll turn around and teach people how to do that too. So and do you mostly work with Latinos and women or Latinas yes. and, wi- yeah, and women? Yeah, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, at the Empresaria workshops, it's well, Empresaria. Empresaria. It's Empresaria is, yeah. on purpose mm-hmm. um, because when I went through the process of opening Postres Cafe, I realized how much, you know, microaggressions and sexism there still was or still is. Um, like I would show up to pick up my um, architect plans and stuff like that, and they'd be like, it would say Gabriel. Like, oh, are you here for Gabriel's whatever? Or like, I'm like, oh, no. are you picking up Gabriel's shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, You're no, like, oh, no, you're soy Gabriel. Es la esposa de Gabriel. Vino a Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be Gabriel's secretary. Yeah, so <laughs> they would do stuff like that, and I was just like, damn, you know. So it would always kind of take crazy me by. like that. Are they though? I mean, listen, not to defend, not to, listen, not to defend, not to defend that behavior, but when I was in school. And, and still uh, in the real work for, in the real world workforce, mm-hmm. um, I dabbled a lot with the medical field. And that's what I, and, and the crazy part is that everywhere that I went, every door closed with when I, when I went to like, oh, I'm gonna be a paramedic and then I got DUI. Uh, oh, but if you wait and it'll come off your record, you're young enough and I get another one. I'm like, okay, so that's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Scratch this. Uh, I'm gonna be a freaking, um, I'm gonna be a nurse, you know? Uh, and then, uh, but with the, 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 while taking classes, somebody says, why don't you just go to PA school? Mm-hmm. And we're talking, this is in the nineties, something in the mid nineties, not that long ago. This is not the distant past. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I said, PA school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah f- a physician's assistant. And it's like, it's, it's, um, it's like a nurse practitioner, except it's a bachelor program. And it pays more than nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, it as shit is as sh- that's that, that's horrible. But to be a nurse practitioner, you need a master's degree. Mm-hmm. To be a PA, you just needed at that time a, bachelor. a mm-hmm. bachelor's degree, and you got paid more because it was a male-dominated field. Yes, and the nurse, the NP world was a female-dominated field. Mm-hmm. Which is again, that is part of uh, of of yeah, it is Society. sexism. It is, but, and but and yeah. everybody, and even at the at, uh, when I worked as an EMT, and I'd walk into the freaking room, if there was a female doctor, a lot of times they'd say, "Oh, uh, can you call the doctor back in?" Because they thought she was the fucking nurse. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I mean, I know the, I knew the verbiage, I knew the vocabulary. I was filling out fucking histories and shit, mm-hmm. but I was a fucking EMT, yeah. and yet they would say, "Call the doctor," mm-hmm. and the doctor was in the fucking, which is like, it, it it's already in people's head. Yeah. Again, uh, not not defending them, but it's just been for it's, so no, long. It's so typical and expected. Expected, yes, and so. That's why like the sociology helped me a lot because mm-hmm. I understood why people behaved in those ways. And so understanding it helps me remove it one step so that I don't react emotionally. Yes, because it's easy to get like Yeah. And I and I thought that that's what you were doing right now and I was no. so which, which was like, I'm, I'm like okay, wait a minute. Cuz no. cuz immediately it's like fucking sexist goddamn patriarchy. No, so it's Down like- with the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> no because then I then I realized I'm like I don't have 200 years to get rid of that. So no. let me let me use an ally. And let's work together to get this done. Yeah, I mean, I get I get messages sometimes from people, and they'll be like, "Does your husband do the readings?" I'm like, "You don't listen to the podcast. My mm-hmm. husband's an atheist. <laughs> like, my husband does not do the readings." Or they'll be like, "Oh, um, does but, you know?" Like, assuming but, but, there's but a man. But to be fair, but to be fair, even in your faith, 
we've talked about how you cannot be in certain positions if you're a woman. It has to be a man. Mm-hmm. Correct. And I think that the the misinformation that there is is that like a Baba Lao is my son's going to be a Baba Lao. It's the high priest of the religion. But I'm an Orisha and I have a Dudua and I have a lot of things. And my son's going to be a Baba Lao tomorrow and he'll need 20 years to catch up to me. Mm. It doesn't matter. He's a Baba Lao. He'll mm-hmm. need 20 years to catch up to me. But on paper. But on paper, he can just, do things just, that I'm, I can't. Just, no, just, you know, he can do, but that's like, that yes. because even my son, right? I mm-hmm. only have one. So he's like, oh, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you need 20 years. Call me in 20. When you read for 20 years and you study and mm-hmm. you practice and you do it for 20 years, then talk to me. Exactly. That's why yeah, even no, no, in Baba no, no, Lao, no. there's a woman, you so, know, but, so, but, but people so, do expect men to th- be behind listen, things. It's, it's mm-hmm. just like, it, and, and religion is a big part of why. I mean, let's the just face it, because everybody, everybody wants to blame this, blames this, blame that. At the core of it, let's just go and say and, and admit that mm-hmm. it is religion yes. that has conditioned us to Completely. those belief system. For thousands of years. Completely, because yes. everywhere you look, God's a man. Yeah, God's except, a white man. Except in the Church of England, did you see they're changing that? No. Oh, he's a them. He's a them. They's a them. Oh, they's okay. a them. They's a them. Yes. For the weeds of yes, progress. and they're changing yeah. the art father. It's going to be art father and mother. No, it's not. I shit you not. I'm not making this up. I was going to talk about wow. this on yo yo yo, but why not talk about it here? Here we are. So there you go. The prayer is going to be it away the prayer is going to be our father and mother. Yes. Wow. Who that's in really progressive. That is. Yes. Now, there's wow. a lot of people protesting this. They are very angry that God's going to be a they, them. Uh-huh. But you that know? makes more sense. Me about uh-huh. energetic. Well, look, let's just be, uh, <laughs> if you go to the ancient religions, like, uh, for instance, the Aztecs, mm-hmm. was, were these gods male or female? They were energy. Yeah. They were energy. And also, they were both good and evil. Mm-hmm. They were creators and destructors. Well, well I guess I guess the Christian God's a destructor too. He sent floods and yeah. pestilences. Yeah, and he's a creator. Because yeah. you there isn't but the problem not the problem. The issue I take with Christianity and, and, and the things that are based on that belief is that it's very like hell and damnation, like don't masturbate, don't this, don't that, don't you're gonna go to hell, you're gonna go to hell. And mm-hmm. it, it's evil. And it's I don't shame believe based. in yeah, and I don't believe in evil, I believe in light and the absence of light. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Light yeah. and the absence of light. And you can get light into your life. You could you could well, start what, with the absence of light. And that's what a guru right? does. A guru enlightens. Mm-hmm. He's an enlightener. Where the fuck is my cape? <sighs> I don't know, but I'm a goddamn guru. I bring in the red light. District? Uh, all kinds of light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 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 Here I am trying yeah, to have a good conversation. Yeah. Okay. And you want to go to the red light district. Okay, forget four. it. So... <laughs> Just like in the Bible, always women Honestly. bringing down the man. Yes. Um, okay, so you were now you're just focusing on your own businesses and now helping I people am. with their businesses. Yes, now okay. I am. And how wow. do your parents feel about that? UCLA, USC. So my parents, it's funny because they they came to Postres to help me run the business because we we were either going to lay everybody off or close the doors because sales so we opened during the time where they allowed people to dine in for like two seconds in the oh. pandemic and it's like 25 percent capacity or something crazy i don't know if you guys remember that that's so crazy that you opened right at that time yes and the, it's fucking incredible that you survived it exactly that's why i'm like so i always held the vision for posters and i always knew the potential it had i just never foresaw a pandemic coming and neither did anybody else so that wasn't in my business plan um but it was my parents coming and supporting and saying like we're not gonna let you close it because we know what you went through and we're gonna be here so they didn't leave until end of december last year 2022 wow they were still helping you they were on still, the daily at your yeah shop. but they insisted that i go be a social worker which is interesting because they were like, you went to school for that. Like, go and do that. And we'll help you here while you can do some of it. And oh, this is like, like your backup plan. Yeah. Stress, but yeah, you, yeah. you focus on what focus pays. Focus on the real yeah. Focus on the there. business that pays. Wow. You. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And for me, I always saw the long term. And that's how I've always operated. So I was like, I can't just do social work as much as they're telling me to. So I knew, too, that energetically they were not aligned. And so I wanted that transition to be very peaceful. So I convinced them to go to Mexico for three weeks <laughs> on vacation. Very well deserved, by the way. Um, but I needed to prove to them that I could run it by myself. Mm-hmm. And I did. 
So oh. they're now back home living their best life. And I'm Very over cool. here focusing on posters now by myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, with with that, I feel like and Martin and I have talked about it before that when you grow up and there's like not the most financial security, mm -hmm. you become a person who's a planner like you plan. Right. Like mm -hmm. if I have 30 days of this, if I could make it for two months, if I can make it for. So I feel like our parents, you know, who who really struggled more than than we ever did right mm -hmm. or will i feel like they were so focused on the financial stuff oh yeah well, they, like, they do whatever it is know, even if you're um, not happy but exactly. just work just work yeah the, the, what is the, the higher the hierarchy of needs right mm -hmm. and maslow's the, yeah maslow's hierarchy of needs right that you start off with food and shelter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then a lot of people get yeah i mean self-actualization is at, at the, the top yeah. but who in the fuck has time for their dreams when you're so uh, worried so about, worried about food and shelter. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you'll never get to that. It, but it, then we have the, the, I don't know if you guys ever feel this, but it's like the weird guilt that you're like, why do I get to have this, ex get to these other areas of the self, whereas they were just on survival mode. And then you just start Because it's, it's still both. them. So you mm -hmm. are, you are your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so their DNA is experiencing that. So that was the phase that they were at in order to keep climbing. Mm -hmm. You're just at the level that you're at, but the DNA will continue to climb. So whatever your, uh, your future, uh, spawn, but you know, the, your future generations are going to be at a different place yes. because of the work that you guys have already put in. And so so there is no there's no guilt there it's it's just part of the evolution look yeah. uh, i've said before my father was uh, an immigrant born in 1931 in a freaking poor town in mexico uh with polio they put mm -hmm. him out in the chicken coop to die because they didn't have food to spare for him there's a great depression going on in the yeah. u.s the mexico is even worse mm -hmm. so and he managed to survive i mean his whole life he was fighting uh, made a lot of horrible decisions, but he's making these decisions uh, out of survive. survival mode. Survival, survival, mode. survival mode. And yeah. so, and and then I'm a product of that, and 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 my mom sacrifices, you mm -hmm. know. And then now my kids are a product of his, my mom, and me, Yours. and their mom, and now my grandkids <laughs> are. So it's so Thank it's you. it's this, and you see this evolution of. Mm -hmm of what of 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 things you know and um there's i mean there's a million examples of of how i was raised versus how i raised my kid versus mm -hmm. how he's raising his kids it's yeah. like you see this incredible growth yeah i think the the biggest challenge for me was the the religious part um because i saw how my mother was raised and it was a small ranchito and it was heavy on the catholic and so her value system is like 99.9 .9 based on the catholic church and so even though i'm doing great things to the Bendito rest of society Dios. yeah ni lo mande Dios, right yeah. um, <laughs> Dios nos cuide. Este, yeah. even though i was doing great things outside of mm -hmm. church and mm -hmm. what society is like wow that's amazing to her it's like Por qué no te pones a predicar en una iglesia? Or like, she will only see the value within the context that she has her system within. And so that's where, when you start telling me that I'm not a good enough X, Y, and Z, because I'm not abiding by your value system, that's when the issues start between the generations and the ancestors while they're still here, right? Because <laughs> they're very vocal about oh, what they think about you. Listen. Well, I mean, first of all, Hispanics in general, our culture is very criticon. Yes. We're very criticones. Like, if you ain't doing it the way people did it before, they're going to talk shit, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it's a very... And worried about what the people will say. Yes, and very oh, worried. On very worried. ¿Qué va a decir la gente? Heavy and, on the shame. And heavy mm -hmm. on the wine to keep up, right? Mm -hmm. Like, appearances. That's mm -hmm. why so many people, you know, have suffered with so many things in silence because they, they want to keep up appearances, right? Yes. Like, but... Or I, keep the family together. Or keep the family together, or like the the shame that's instilled in you where you are taught to like take things right mm -hmm. you know but that's your cross to bear i, <laughs> I almost hit myself <laughs> um <laughs> yeah uh i have a lot of people who come and get consulted with me who are like like our age or even older right and then they'll be like you know i have a godson who 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 is older and he for so long was so secretive about his religion because his family's from Mexico. He was like, they're not going to 
believing it. No, I'm going to kill my mother. Like, she's going to see me that I'm a son. She's going to fucking have a heart attack and die, mother. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but she's not. Well, but th- 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 but it's a valid fear. Yeah, because, of course. Because so. even, even somebody that grows up in, a, in not just Catholic, but in a lot of different religions, if all of a sudden you say, I'm going to go do Santeria, you might as well say I'm a devil worshiper. Literally. But I, but I think the value is in education, right? Like, as mm-hmm. him, for an example, like, I've known him a long time, you know, and I, and I knew his mother, who's already passed now. And I mean, before she passed, you know, I put Coyada. She has a she had, she had Coyada. She, it was very like, it's almost like you're so scared to talk about things and educating things. We are not, everybody evolves, right? Mm-hmm. You are not the comedian as the same comedian from the 50s, 60s. You're evolved. You're a comedian now. Mm-hmm. You're not an empresaria from the 80s. You're now. I'm mm-hmm. not a Santera from Huntington Park. I'm now. Mm-hmm. Like this, th- things evolve. Like yeah. the fact Bounty that. bitch. That, no. That, <laughs> <laughs> no, like things evolve, right? Yeah. So then you're not because. The levels of consciousness. And the mm-hmm. levels of education. Like we, we've had conversations even like with well with mona remember when mona was here and i was like oh when people read a lot and you don't necessarily have to go to college but you have to be a person open to knowledge Mm -hmm. i feel like it's easier to talk to people about things but then you go backwards with your family members where your first generation and those people are, no fuck that it's the church and if it's not the church we're going to hell yeah yeah no it's literally like i said it you might as well be worshiping the devil it is it they 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 count it hand in hand to well, be honest what's wild is that for me i had a very spiritual healing experience last year in mexico mm. in zacatecas where the in the town where my mom is from mm-hmm. and this lady was not open about it because she's in Mexico, but when, cause I just showed up for a massage cause my shit was fucked up and <laughs> I show up and I see like the chakras hanging in her wall and she had all these certifications and I'm reading all of them. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like she's a spiritual person. And then I start asking her about the chakras and energy cause she's giving me a massage and she tells me, she's like, you deal with a lot of anxiety. And I'm like, yeah, a lot for your, your eyes, eyes, eyes yeah and then she goes but like for years and i think she was doing the reflexology on my feet and she's like do you know what set it off and i said yes and she's like oh okay but my husband was in the room so she didn't want to uh-huh. open up too much until she knew like where we were standing um but three sessions later i find out that she's a parallel version of me and we basically do the same thing, except she's in Mexico and I'm You're over here. here. And mine's called Empresaria Society and hers is called Circulos de Mujeres. And it was crazy because she told me, she's like, have you done ay- ayahuasca or have you done any? I'm like, no. She's like, es que te me haces muy despierta. And I was like, girl, it's a trauma. <laughs> like, well, you know, like, and it's, I think that's but also, what but also set the it education. up. Pre- pressure also makes diamonds. Education. Don't worry, Gabby. Pressure yeah, makes no, diamonds. No, no, because. The, the trauma could do two things. It could sideline you mm-hmm. and make you helpless because a lot of people mm-hmm. can't, can't yes. move on past their trauma. Yes. Yes. And then there's some people that thrive because they're not going to let the trauma stand in their way yeah. of their of their success. Yeah. They're, then at that point, you're still being traumatized because the, the trauma is winning mm-hmm. when you when you uh, are become so angry mm-hmm. that you can't take the next step forward. Mm-hmm. And so it, the fuck were we talking about? The the healing experience. The healing with this experience. Woman. Yeah, no, no, no. But mm-hmm. but 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 you're when when she says porque estás despierta, mm-hmm. which means that you you are uh, spiritually conscious, not yes. just awake. Not yes. Just, and I hate to use the word woke, uh, it, but but it's this 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 awakening, the spiritual yes. awakening that happens. Uh, the more you learn and the more educated you become. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, it it does help with that. Yeah. But but I think you mentioned your godson being like my mom would literally die. So I I asked my mom a month ago or two. I was visiting her and I just asked her like, "Are you happy? Like, are you living your best life?" And she starts crying. Mm. She breaks down, and I'm just like, "What the hell did I just ask her?" <laughs> like, girl, just kidding. I was like, girl, I was just trying to vibe. You're talking but, to your mom. Yes, to my mom. Uh-huh. And she starts crying, and she's just like, "I raised you guys in the church, and you guys don't go to church, and I just feel like I, I messed failed. up, mm-hmm. and like I'm going to hell because you guys are not going." Wow. And she was suffering, and it. So at that moment, I was like, I became angry. Because I'm like, she's suffering, because in my mind, I'm like, she's suffering for something that was so like socially made up, and it was used to keep people in control. I'm doing all that, right? But then I'm like, that conversation's not going to lead anywhere with her. How can I talk to her to like 
bridge our worlds and to ease her suffering but not give up my belief system. And so in that moment, I was going through all the different avenues that I could go through. And, and I started with, like, I need you to understand that while you raised me in the church and you took me to catechism classes and I did all that, what I saw you practicing as a person was very different. And so I come from a very toxic, criticona family. There was a lot of abuse happening, a lot of... Um, infidelity just stealing from each other but oh they were showing up at on sunday every sunday at church you know so so the hypo there was hypocrisy yeah so as a kid i'm like okay i'm doing the the catechismo or whatever but i'm seeing the people that are pounding their chest at church and how they act outside and it's like the inconsistency just didn't allow me to understand what was going on and so i explained to her while while you did this by like she checked off her list it was like i interpreted something very differently from that experience so i need you to understand that i see i see god outside of church a lot more than i see him inside and so starting right there with her i i try to just bring her over to my world a little bit without discrediting her reality because i'm like if i i know i could have gone deep and like rocked her world but i was like why am i gonna do that <laughs> How old is your mom? She's gonna be fifty-five this year. Oh, she's young. She's young, yeah. but she's she's the all fuck. Did you yes. laugh over there? Yeah, that? she laughed. No, she's young. I'm gonna be um, fifty-five this year. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> she's like she's gonna be fifty-five this year. Wow, she's young. Yeah, I'm over she's here. young. She's <laughs> like goes nada. No, estamos nuevos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> but but i think that that's like a better route right like look i have uh, my grandmother kibaya she already passed away my grandmother was very i mean the older i get the more i think i'm like her my grandmother was like a ball buster right mm -hmm. like she had a stroke when she was in her early 40s uh like late, late 40s early 50s and everybody was like we're gonna pray for you my grandmother was like don't pray for i don't believe in god like mm -hmm. straight up Grew up in Mexico, was like, I don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. I don't, they thought she was going to die. Don't bring me a priest. Then it very like hardcore, right? Mm -hmm. So then during all that, she, my mother gets into Santeria, you know, whatever. And I remember my mom was like, I cannot tell her, mm. you know, like she's yeah. going to think I'm crazy. Like I'm going to show up, you know, they cut my hair. What am I going to do? And then as time went on, you know, I remember one day I had a conversation with her and she had gotten sick. And we were always doing things like washing like certain jewelry things with the santo to put them on her. But it was jewelry like just wear mm -hmm. this, just wear this. Right. Treating her like a kid almost. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where one day I was like, I need to tell you something like, yeah. you know, and in Spanish. And I told her, you know, I, I, I love you. Like, I, I adore you. Mm -hmm. Like, I would never do anything that was that was bad my mm -hmm. mother would never do anything understand where i'm coming from like this is a spirituality i think it's going to work for you try it mm -hmm. let me give you a real koyad because you're wearing all this gold i'm gonna be honest with you we're sacrificing chickens we're washing all of it all this stuff is because we want you to live longer live a, a healthier life you know like live and she was like okay would wear it was very like you know to to the time where she passed away was and would sometimes tell me well bring it back because I would take it and bring it and she would be like Trae me el collar. Mm -hmm. bring me the collar. but it got to the point where it was like look we cannot keep tippy toying around this situation like I understand that you hate she hated the church for very valid reasons because mm -hmm. she felt like it was very hypocritical she had a kid out of wedlock mm -hmm. she was like the my mother was the fifth generation of an only woman like only they were only birthing women mm -hmm. for five generations and they only had one daughter and they fucking suffered. Mm -hmm. Right. So my grandmother was like, fuck this church, fuck this patriarchy, fuck all this shit, mm -hmm. you know? So then I had to explain to her, like, this is not, not all spirituality is, is, is like, is, that. yeah, is mm -hmm. going to dominate you. Like, but I do feel like when they're raised in something and that's all they, they know, know, it, it has to do with your social standing too. Yes. Right. Cause mm -hmm. you go to church, everybody dresses up for church. Yes. 
Like literally they're eating, you know, frijoles y, y huevo, but at church they're to the nines and they're giving their tithing. Mm -hmm. Like it's so crazy how it all ties in, especially I feel like for Hispanics, right? Yeah. And, and my mom's value system and who she understands herself to be is tied to all that. So if I'm operating outside of that, she doesn't understand how to work with me. And so I told her, you being, you suffering because I'm not going to church I said, let me turn it around for you. It's like if I suffered because you didn't go to UCLA or because you don't make your own money. That's my value system. No, 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 but this and is I'm for not... eternity. I want you to go to heaven, mija. Yes, I'm just like, girl, hold on. Like, <laughs> where? And then I started... La escuela no te va a llevar al cielo, solo Jesús. That's the hard part because it, that's she literally thinks she's trying to check off a list to increase her odds of getting into heaven. Yes. And I'm not part of her checklist, so she feels like I'm messing it up for her. Because they're going to ask her about her kids, right? Judgment Day is going to come. What you do with these three daughters I gave you? Well, mm. one of them became an empresaria and she didn't go to church. So I'm going to hell. Also, oh, she, she, you know. <laughs> so do your other sisters go to church? It's easier for a. They're more likely to. They're more. <laughs> but they still don't go like how she would want them to. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's from the Bible. I got Amen. so many problems Jesus. with that. What, you got what? I said I got so many problems with that. No, no, no. Yeah. Es, es más fácil que entre un camello por el ojo de una aguja mm -hmm. que un rico entre a la gloria. I wanna... and, and, and so when you say she became an empresaria, it's not too far from everything that she's That she knows. Fed. Yeah. So... It's, it's like you chased mammon. And, you yeah. cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon was the word for money, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the God of money. And so you, 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 you are, you know... Um, Th th that's the way to uh, go to hell. It's uh, it's it's but filled here's, with money. Here's where evil, my, the root of all evil. Here's my my thing. So in um, in my family, it's there's been this one person that had their company, and they employed my mom's siblings, and that person assaulted me as a kid, but because he controlled their paycheck, they didn't say anything. So that's where I understood that evil happened, which is ironic because they were okay covering that and still showing up to church. But if I spoke out about it, then I was a sangrona and I was the one that was rocking well, that's the boat. Like a, that was like a very big, and I'm sorry that happened to mm -hmm. you, but that was like a very big lesson too, right? Like he who controls the purse yes, which controls why, everything, right? Which is why I'm so big on having multiple sources of income because I mean, nadie me va a controlar. Well, yeah, you said right now, my mom doesn't make her own money, which means that you value making your own money. When people make comments like that, you don't make your own money. It's and, because that there's a power dynamic and to when money. You, yes. and, when you, and when you overlook um, common sense, dignity, and self-respect in, or, in order to get a paycheck, who's the one who's valuing money? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, and, you know, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, who they fucking killed because she was a loud mouth, uh, I would have been killed too. She Hi said, key. she said, you know what happened to us. Yeah. Uh, she said, <laughs> she, when she was talking about prostitution and all the prostitutes that they were punishing, mm -hmm. and she said, who sins more? He who pays to sin or he who gets paid to sin? Mm hmm. The, 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 quien peca más? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and she was literally talking about men. Yeah. Paying for Who this. were paying. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know? And then there's people that are like, hey, you know what? I'm needy, and you're going to pay me. Fuck it. I guess I'll sin. Yeah. You know, who's the bigger sinner? And they say, shut up, bitch. Stop reading. Mm -hmm. Not I mean, only that, you cannot literally. judge people who, for their sins, if you want to call them sins, let's say you do. Yeah. You cannot judge people for the sins for their sins when all of us sin differently. Exactly. So you can't, you can't throw a stone because whatever it is. So that's not... Don't judge me because I sin differently than you. Yeah, and the fact that people associate financial stability and abundance with it being like, oh, a ti te gusta el dinero, Greed. no estás con Dios. Mm -hmm. I'm reading that book that I'm reading that you guys saw me reading. The, the guy's a, a professor and he said that his biggest problem to that he didn't want to get into Ifa now he's a Babala is because he thought Ifa was going to tell him to give up all his material possessions mm. he was like when they were like you should do this I was like fuck that like I'm a professor I drive a Porsche I have a mm -hmm. house in Miami he's like the first thing I thought was they're gonna because the church had always told me 
that I was living too high on the hog. Mm -hmm. He's like, so I, when I went to go see this, blah, 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 I was like, the first thing he's going to tell me is, you know, he goes, and the first thing this guy told me was everything you have now, if I was going to multiply it four times, because being abundant is not a sin. It's not. And John 10, 10 says, um, <laughs> The devil comes to kill. The enemy comes to kill and to destroy. I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And which is the scripture that the prosperity gospel preachers use a lot of times. Now, there's a difference between abundance and and having money. And there's another difference between using religion to enrich yourself, which Correct. is which is not OK. Correct. It's not. And they turn a blind eye to that. Yes. They it's like you don't want to use when, your critical thinking when skills. When you're selling miracle part. blankets for $1000 that are going to take care of your bills, the thousand dollars isn't going to take care of your bills. This fucking blanket I'm going to send you is your mm -hmm. fuck. And we always say that we don't knock the hustle. Martin and I always say we don't knock the hustle. But I think that the there's a difference there's between the hustle, hustle, the hustle and, stops and highway robbery. The hustle stops Scammers. when you start taking when you start being a scammer. Yeah. yeah. You can go if I charge what if I charge $50 to read you, that's my if you mm -hmm. don't want to pay it, don't pay it. But if I charge fifty dollars to read you, then lie to you and bullshit you, that's the problem. Yeah. And okay, so okay, so this reading right here is telling me that we we'll only need to kill a couple of goats in order to get rid of this shit that's fucking you up, or you're gonna die. So it's mm -hmm. gonna be five k, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to do it before July, monkey. And you can't tell anyone. Well, I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> no I, le digas a nadie. That sounds like I just trauma. had somebody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is. I just had somebody come to me. I'm not laughing at this person who came to me. I've had somebody come to me who literally had somebody who was basically bamboozling them every three weeks. Ugh. Fly me out. Fly me out. I'm gonna go clean your house. And I was like, what would she clean it with if she had to come out? Like me, I'm thinking all kinds of things, right? Like I don't know. I'm very mm -hmm. Harry Potter too. I was like, yeah. ooh, yeah. you know. And she was like, oh, like I don't know. She threw like Florida water in the court. She threw Florida water in the court or what the fuck oh and my God. i'm like but then i'm gonna be honest with you guys too y'all like the show you like the show you like the show you like the madam cleo's you like the mm -hmm. water mercados yeah. you like the show so then you meet somebody who actually has mediumship and i'm not like getting possessed and throwing fucking guacamole out of my mouth yeah. and it's a problem mm -hmm. right because you want you like the show yeah you like the show mm -hmm. so it because that's what you're accustomed to right the preachers are gonna touch you you're gonna pass oh, out oh my god if you start jumping around and, ooh, <laughs> and then they fall over I'm yeah. in. I want to see How many of that. those churches that speak in tongues? I had a friend who went to one of those churches, and I was like, "Well, who, who translates? Oh, the minister. Where, what language is it? Well, so, 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 where do you guys so, read it? So, yeah. so, there's a lot of Nowhere. times that somebody in the congregation, because somebody will just go off on tongues, and then somebody in the congregation will then. I, this is what I've seen. Not yeah. that it's real or not. Mm -hmm. And somebody will say, they'll because they'll, they'll 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 do their tongues right and then they'll say blah 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 yada yada right and they do their thing and then the music <laughs> keep, the organ music keeps going and everybody's oh praise you yes hallelujah you're so wonderful you're so wonderful and then it starts mellowing out and mellowing out and then just in the nick of time somebody says thus saith the lord thy god tonight i want to bless you you have come out. You are my church, and I and I'm just making this shit up right now, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and, and so they'll they'll and then they'll they'll say something, and then a lot of times it it will coincidentally correspond with the message that's about to happen. Usually, when it's mm. about abundance and having faith and having faith in giving, because unless you plant some, unless you plant a seed, you you if you have seeds, Tanya, and you hold on to these seeds and you put them in your pocket, well, they, they can't grow. grow. You need grow. to plant your seeds. You need to do Correct. the same thing with your tithes and Correct. offerings. If you hold on to your money, mm -hmm. how do you expect the Lord to bless? Bless you, you disobedient children. Yeah. Just take my money. I believe. <laughs> Literally. I believe. No, but yeah. there's, I mean, you, I don't know. Like the old school idea of like you going to church and giving money, you know, I feel like you can 10%. help. You can help the tithing, right? You can help so yep. many people in so many different Other ways. ways. Yes. And then that's, that was my whole thing with my mom where I told her, you don't know how many messages I receive. So, so many DMs, so many uh, people that come in to the cafe where I see that as like I'm ministering faith and like what I do and what I believe in. just just because it's outside of a temple doesn't mean it energetically isn't doing anything, you know. And so I, I tried to talk to her in that way. And I told her, look, it's like if I'm this fish and I'm like the fastest 
most awesomest fish in the ocean, but you're judging my ability to fly. I'm like, I'm not a bird, mom. And you're going to miss out on how amazing of a fish I am. a freaking mermaid I am. <laughs> I'm the best fish ever. I'm one of the mythical you that, sirens. You know I mean? like, and I'm like, it's, and that's why I try to tell her. Um, but ultimately, too, I told her, like, there's a lot about you that I am proud of. And I thank you for being the amazing mom that you are. So I, when I told her that, she started, like, softening up. And I just held her, you know, and, and I feel like that kind of just helped us bridge those two worlds but i reminded her like i understand that you have your belief system but it's the vocal part the you like casting the shame i don't do that and, and you, i and it's my value system about having options with money right but i'm not gonna sit here and say like i get me inside because she doesn't have her own money but you have children you have a child or a child i have two you have two mm -hmm. okay so how old are they my son's gonna be 10 and my daughter just turned six. Oh, okay they're little yeah so what do you teach them I teach them about um, energy. I teach them about good thoughts. I teach them about attracting good things to your life. Oh, nice. So in the morning, we say our, like, um, intentions. Say? Your mantra? We set, yes, we set our intentions every day. I expand in abundance, success, and love as I inspire others around me to do the same. Nice. And we say that every day. And I'm like, everything is always working out for me. And my, my daughter's like, everything is always working out for me because I always make friends. <laughs> so That's like, cute. And then my son will be like, oh, mom, I thought about that. That's crazy. I didn't know that you were, you, this was going to manifest so fast. And so I'm teaching them about energy and just knowing like when something feels right to them like don't ignore that and my kids are are very like so basically new age that. witchcraft is what you teach your children oh, i teach I'm them good <laughs> energy because i know i, I no, recognize I'm just saying, new age witchcraft is what some religious person would call that that's right? what they call it yeah, yeah. but like yeah. baby witchcraft new age it, it's, right like it's, it's like anything visualization not so and scary like that, it's, yeah it's, it's, but we're it's, still it's, it's, it's it would fall under the new age umbrella. Appro appropriate to their consciousness and that's where i keep it that's like it the next conversation comes when they're ready so like if one of them came to you and was like i want to be buddhist yeah then we would have that conversation okay. and i would tell them look it's whatever is calling your soul right now go and explore that and go find out what you need from that don't tell your grandma <laughs> no because you're gonna break grandma's thing, heart <laughs> don't don't no le digan abuelita when i told my mom about my healing healing experience the first thing she said was like son cosas del diablo or, or it's 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 normal like wow. she was so afraid wow so but now, my what, grandma what, wasn't did my you ever do did more. you ever like so when you say your healing experience what would like was it the the pressure points that that person was doing so with, she, with that lady or was it uh, uh did you continue on different um i continue disciplines I no well just with her that's I did the pressure points and then I did a guided meditation and breath work, um, but I was only there for a week so we only had a little bit of time, but she's a more evolved person and she has other things that she works with people but I'm actually going back in May to like do more because and you you've never tried ayahuasca or any other type of hallucinogen I have not but I know someone very close to me that did and. Prior to that, he wasn't, uh, he said, like, his third eye wasn't open, for example, just that language, right? Um, and he tried it this past December, and now he sees a lot of what I've been seeing, whereas before, for example, like, if I didn't want to fight my dad on something, right? He's like, why do you always let him da da da? And I'm like, it's just because this is his understanding, and I was just trying to, you know, help the situation go in a more productive way. But now he's like, no, your dad's on a different journey. Like, n I understand why. And it's just. You can't unfuck everybody. Exactly. You legit cannot unfuck everybody. And you also can't. You can't help everybody either. Because no. some people, their journey right now is not to be helped. It's, it's. Mm -hmm. It's sad sometimes because you see people going in this circle and it's so destructive and you put like a lot of like as far as like for, for my experience, I put like a lot of effort, a lot of energy into helping people. Yeah. And there's people who will just keep doing the same, same thing. thing to the point where it gets to the point where I'm a very different Santera. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Stop coming because mm -hmm. it's not it. Don't waste your money. Yeah, because and you're wasting my time, too. Mm -hmm. And my energy is just so exhausting to be with you. It is. So I wish you a lot of luck. But mm -hmm. I think at this point, we've 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 reached the end of our journey. And yeah. then people get very offended. They're like, well, why? What? Well, 
because we're just going in a circle, my guy. But like, you understand this. that too, right? Like the distinction between who yeah. you can keep working with and who's just not going to, in people, this lifetime, they're not going to do it. Yeah, and there's people, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I mean, I'm very blessed. We get a lot of messages for to like, you know, readings of this and that. And there's people just from the way that they message me. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll be like consistently messaging me. I don't know yeah. how, you, how you tolerated me. What I say? Limpia me. Limpia me. <laughs> You do, you do limpia, limpia me. Limpia me. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> you do limpia, Straight to limpia, the point. You do limpias, limpia me. You do limpias, right? Or, limpia or then me. there's people who will like not in a nice way. Like Martin calls me a bruja and it's funny and we think it's funny. Yeah. But there's people who call you a bruja and it's not nice. No, it's not. They're like saying it in a like a bad connotation. Um, yeah, like, like, I wish I could burn you. Yeah, yeah. Like and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, exactly. Okay, we're gonna start wrapping it up, uh -huh. Gabriela. But it's been a fascinating conversation. Actually, I'd like for you to come back because it seems like well. we, we didn't have enough time. Uh, and and hey, we didn't um, even talk about our book. Yes, <laughs> what, talk about your book a little bit. Um, the first book I wrote was about my experience. The first book, this <laughs> motherfucker. I knew Martin was gonna Are be you like, out of your fucking laughing. mind, lady. I'm already fucking laughing. We'll see the first book. She's like, I. Um, <laughs> It, it she's was. Just, she's like, "Qué hueva!" <laughs> <No. laughs> she's like, "We're on volume 16. I vacillated no. between a book and a movie, but I've decided the book would be a little bit more my speed to start off with. Play um, is coming it's soon. Now. I also wouldn't be honoring the fact that I have a second book coming out no, next month. That's fantastic, and that's yeah. like the next well, part. Yeah, t tell us about your first book. <laughs> next month that tells about your second yeah, book well the uh, first one was just about my experience as a first generation daughter of mexican parents at ucla and what's it and called it's called 16 and a college student 16 and a college student because yeah. at the time 16 and pregnant was very popular oh how long did you write this i published it in 2018 holy shit yeah okay and the next one is me getting married pregnant remember pregnant mm -hmm. traumada y embarazada i got it got mm -hmm. it um till right before i opened postres cafe and and being in that new mom space new wife and recent grad what does your husband do time. can i ask you he's a nurse oh. yeah but oh. he's a hospice nurse oh, oh he's an empath Oh. And I was a hospice social worker for the last oh, three years. Oh, so, God. Yeah. So That's hospice so spiritually rough. was <laughs> Yeah, very because people who usually hospice nurses are, have empathy. Oh, absolutely. They're very empathetic. Yeah, um, yeah no, big, like when I, my mom was in hospice <laughs> and it yes. was, um, Thank that, you. that's a, I think that's that's a hard because when when you're in a hospital, the goal is let's get them better and out of here. Mm -hmm. When you're in a hospice, it's like let's just make them comfortable, comfortable. and and let them transition, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's a whole different level of 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 human of human experience. Has, yes, mm -hmm. my God. Yes. Um, now, where can they find your book? Um, this next one is going to no, be the first the one. first one. <laughs> Yeah, the the, not the on, one that's not available the yet. The first one is on Amazon. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. It's I, on Amazon. Amazon and Barnes and Nobles online. A Barnes and Noble online. Yeah. Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And tell me the name again. 16, 16 and a college student. And a college student. Yeah. What, you didn't put on a UCLA college student? I didn't. It's, I would have. It's in the back Show side. Off. When you read it, <laughs> on the back side, they say so. <laughs> oh, so in, the, in the back side, they say, yeah, I would have yeah. fucking put the little bear right there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is blue and yellow, though. Oh, oh there you the go. Book. Yeah. There yeah. You okay, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, um, Subliminal. That's uh, yes. uh, 16 and a college student available. Yes. Do you have copies at your uh, um, cafe? At Postas? Yes, I do, actually, because you've asked for them. Fuck so I love yeah. Tengo. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And is it paperback or hardback? Hardcover. Pa paperback. Paperback. Yeah. All right. And yeah. do you have it as an audio book? Not yet. I am working at that this month before I release the second one. Are you going to voice it? Yes. Because you better speak up. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, <fucking dying. laughs> I know. That's literally what the second book is about. So he's he's right on point. <laughs> so speak up. 16 and a college student. Yeah. <laughs> it's not ASMR, huh? We were like, what? I know. No, congratulations Thank to you. you that's so freaking much. awesome. Congrats. That's, uh, that's, Thank you guys. That's, okay, now, now so, so Postres Cafe mm -hmm. in Belfast flower uh the book is available on amazon 16 and a college student mm -hmm. and the next book I, oh no and the other business is empresarias Empresaria society empresarias society mm -hmm. and now um what if you're uh uh not a latina 
Can you still hit up Empresaria Society yes. and say, hey, hook it up? Or, no, 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 you're the wrong color. Get out of no, here, No, no. <laughs> I'm energy-based, so just don't bring your crusty energy okay. over here. So, so <laughs> Whoever a, you are. So if you're black or if you're white or yes. if you're Asian, you Doesn't can, matter. You, fuck it, we still, you still can hit you up can Empresaria yes. Society. Yes. Do you guys have meetings and things? Yeah, I actually just had a workshop on Saturday. You had a workshop? Yeah, it's it was the first-gen finance workshop, so I'm teaching people about well, that's important. Finance planning. And Dogecoin? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. She's like, we're all making NFTs of each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Thank you. you so Seriously. Much. Congrats. Um, that, that seems like an incredible uh, journey you've been on and uh, even more incredible uh, destination that you're headed to. So Thank enjoy you. the hell out of that, right? And do do come back when your when your book comes out. <laughs> your second book comes your out. Your second book comes out because I don't think we have we've had a multi published author here wow. before. So you're Thank our first. You. Thank um, you. And uh, you know, and and my niece goes to your. Uh, Go Bruins. Go go Bruins. Yeah. And um and then my other sister graduated from uh, USC as well. Um, there you go. So, there you go. Awesome. Uh, and me, I you know, my yo graduating you're life. amazing. Yo no graduating nada. life. Graduating yes. life. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Brujo 101. Um, Tanya, any anything you want to say? I am. Uh, Chicas is. Oh, well, if, well, on the 17th, I'm actually going to be at Postres. I'm going to be doing like a small pop up. Yes. So I'm going to be the 17th there. 17th is when? Friday. Friday. Uh, we'll Friday. Okay. So I will be there um, for a couple hours. So come by. Come Definitely by try shop. all her stuff. You guys can find me on Ache Imports. Um, we are working on the Brujo page for Instagram. Oh, nice. So we're gonna have that up and coming yeah, soon. Coming soon. All the all the soon. nudes, all Martin's nudes will be there. <laughs> Nobody <his> worry. Nudes. <laughs> Exclusive content. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> anything you want to say, Gabby? Uh, just thank you so much for having me and for trusting me to be on your podcast and with your audience. I'm really grateful for it. So I appreciate thank the support. You. Thank you guys. Hit us with a rate and review. Share us. Go visit the homie Gabriela at Postres yes. Cafe if you find yourself in Bellflower or nearby all the surrounding areas. Let's see what's around there. Lakewood, Long Downey, Beach, Downey. Cerritos. Cerritos. Yeah. And, um, it, it, and it's worth the commute. Go hit it up. Uh, come support the business and uh, check out her book. Have a coffee. Eat a little cheese pastelito. Man. Cheese man. Yeah. Get, get, get all the cheese man. Ask her how her mama doing. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.